Welcome to Women Igniting Change, the place to be for women leaders and decision makers who are passionate about changing the world and determined to act. I'm your host, Robin Jorgensen, former corporate executive, global speaker, and founder and CEO of Women Igniting Change. Let's dive in. Hello, changemakers. Welcome back to the Women Igniting Change podcast. I am so excited for this conversation today. Our guest today is Masami Sato. She is an award-winning social entrepreneur, global speaker, best-selling author, two times TEDx speaker, and founder and CEO of the global giving initiative B1G1, which stands for Buy One, Give One. We're gonna be exploring the question, what if every business could make a difference in their own way just by doing what they normally do and so much more. Masami, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Robin, for having me today. So let's dive into your, your personal journey a little bit. Can you share either an experience or a moment that led you to envision this world based on kindness and giving through B1G1? What inspired you to embark on this mission? Mm. Actually, like growing up, I would have never imagined that I would be doing this <laughs> in the future. Um, today is interestingly um, my birthday, Happy and birthday. I was just reflecting on. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. The forty-nine years, actually, and uh, because I, I'm actually a very introverted, shy, you know, person um, naturally, so um, I didn't really think I would connect with people around the world, right, like this. Um, but what happened was when I um, graduated from school, and then I was thinking about my future. Um, there was like an enormous sense of curiosity inside of me. Um, that took me to spend the next few years traveling around uh, the world as a young backpacker, That's you know, cool. like, so that was like really, <laughs> yeah, very really, like long time ago. And the interesting thing is because at that time I couldn't even speak English. Wow. So for a shy person who couldn't even, you know, communicate very well in my own language to go overseas and you know, being in the super, you know, extremely vulnerable situation to not being able to speak the language that people, you know, were speaking yeah. in in many different countries I visited. So that was like a initially a scary moment, right? <laughs> but it turned out to be that was probably one of my best years in my life where I finally started to learn to connect with people, you know, in, in a new way, because when you take away the expectation of trying to say the right things or trying to do the right things, everywhere I went, I was this person with fresh, you know, like a new ignorant perspective yeah. where I didn't know how to do the right thing in that country. So all I had to do was really to surrender and let go. And then to be open and grateful and accept the people's help uh, when I needed the help. So, um, yeah, so then that was when I started to really see this like amazing um, sense of uh, caring, you know, that existed everywhere. And also what we had in common, you know, there are lots of differences we can see, but there are many things that we share in common, such as our, you know, passion for our own culture or food or family or mm -hmm. friends or, you know, children or, so I realized that there, there, there was so much goodness in the humanity <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And that's when I also, yeah, started to see um, the kind of like magic of this world, as well as some of the global issues that the people are facing everywhere. So I would say that was probably one of the most important moment. <laughs> yeah. And where did you, how did you come with the idea for B1G1? Because I know you've spoke about this mm. before. Where did that idea come from? Mm. So it's come from a simple place because it, as a curious person, right? Like I was kind of really trying to figure out what was happening in this world where, you know, p people like my parents are working so hard and trying to get a better life. Um, but then at the same time, we didn't have a, so much time together as a family or we didn't have a sense of connection. Or And that was one of the reasons why I decided to leave Japan. You know, I felt that the, I didn't really like connect and belong in my own place like there. Yeah. So, but then um, when I saw that the other part of the world, there were people who had nothing, you know, like they, they, they just didn't have even 
simple things like access to water or um, access to education. You know, young children not being able to go to primary school and working on the field or begging on the street. Or So I kind of couldn't make sense of why everybody was working so hard to try to get more. But at the same time, um, our our purpose, like our endeavor of getting more didn't lead to sense of fulfillment. But at the same time, sometimes there are people who have so little, but they seem to be very happy and still smiling and being generous and, and then very giving because I was so you know invited into people's homes to eat food together, but the family seemed they didn't even have enough food for tomorrow. So why would they share that limited food with me? Right. Like, so I just really tried to make sense of it, but I couldn't. So at that time, I decided to kind of let go and move on and get by. But a um, few years later, after that amazing traveling uh, time that I had, I had this another special moment that that was when um, my daughter was born. So I became an accidental mom, even though I used to think like I didn't need to have a create my own family. <laughs> but when I became mom, I felt this enormous sense of connection. Mm -hmm. And I felt strongly that I wanted to do something about the children who actually didn't have opportunity like my daughter would have. Right. So um, I became an entrepreneur, started a food company. I worked really hard to um, create a business and the product and services to help our customers to have access to healthy uh, eating options while being busy. But at the same time, we had this like a pledge to give all the profits away to help um, children who are in disadvantaged circumstances. So that's kind of like how we started, uh, how I started my entrepreneurship journey um, 20, how many years, 22, three years ago. <laughs> But then one moment, there was this moment when I paused like about six years into my entrepreneurship endeavor. I thought that um, when we have a, like a big goal and aspiration in the future, like when we become successful, we would do this. When we have lots of profit, we can build a soup kitchen. You know, like, so that was how we were thinking. But then when you have those big goal and you are busy, as an entrepreneur, business owner, doing things every day, it just feels like your goal is moving away, you know, together with you. Oh, <laughs> and you yes. never catch this carrot in front of you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's when um, we, or, uh, we imagined this simple idea, you know, what if instead of trying to do big thing in the future, we did something small, but did it every day. And then B1J1's idea came to us in the form. So, you know, imagine if um, every time we somebody dines in, you know, like a child receives a meal or imagine every time somebody has a cup of coffee, uh, someone has access to water for a day. Or imagine if somebody reads an inspiring book, then a tree gets planted. Imagine if a coach provides a coaching session, an education is given to a disadvantaged child. And so when we thought about this enormous potential of businesses implementing this simple act of giving uh, and impact, you know, tangible impact into what they do, we could actually come together to transform the world. And we started to execute on this idea in our own business first, because we are food business. Yeah. So every packet of frozen meal um, with healthy ingredients, you know, we were making, we decided to give a meal, right? Like, um, and it didn't cost so much to do so, um, working with experienced um, NGO organization on the ground. So um, several months later after that, I had another realization that actually like, uh, you know, there are lots of food businesses out there, but there was no um, initiative or process or system allowing the businesses to effectively create this impact you know, through what they're doing. So I decided to sell my company in Australia at that time and then moved to Singapore to start the B1G1. And that was 2007. So it's been 16 years in, in the making. Wow. You just gave so many golden nuggets in that. Um, I don't even know where to start. One of the things that you mentioned <laughs> that I really want to unpack for our listeners is you had this idea, but you did something with it. Because I think as women, we believe that women igniting change, that every woman on the planet has an idea 
for a social change or social impact that she is meant to do. And she was given that idea for a reason. But so often we get that idea in our head, but we dismiss it. We push it to the side. We're like, oh, no, that can't possibly happen. And we don't do anything with it. So I love that you heard that idea and you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to do something with this. Um, and just the thing that you can start small and it doesn't have to be this big, grandiose thing. And you can still affect really meaningful change in really small micro impact ways. I love that. So as you were starting B1G1, describe some of the challenges in those early stages and what motivated you to keep going. Mm. <laughs> well, there's actually, always yeah. a lot of so them many, right? Because, right? <laughs> I know. You're like, where do I start with this? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. And also, of course, like if we were um, starting a business that already existed somewhere and there was already existing demand and you knew that, you know, there is a market and opportunity, right? Like you just need to bring better product or better service or, you know, cheaper price. or So if you are doing that, there are examples and right. uh, prototypes and the models, you know, like you, you can you can find. But the, what in what we were doing there was nothing out there um except like a couple of years later we found that there was this um uh, quite well-known company um called tom's shoes or you know Wolby parker or so those like businesses started to um implement some form of like this one for one kind of giving model and then became quite well known so lots of people thought what we were doing was like oh is that like tom's shoes or you know like so there was that kind of in um things happening but what we were creating was very different what we were creating is this methodology and the process and the system and also the kind of curation of projects around the world so um how do we actually make those impacts happen how do we assess the project um so to make sure that we can break down the cost and then you know create in our platform or how do we create a system like this so back then like uh, 16 years ago, that wasn't when even a terminology like a product, you know, like or a product development was not as common. Like people were doing lots of things manually <laughs> at that time. And maybe some companies had a website, <laughs> you know, like it was the start of social media, but in the early stage or people didn't use the technology. So how do we create this like world where um, act of business will result in this impact and then to it, make it possible to measure it and track it, mm -hmm. you not know, to make it meaningful for businesses and which businesses would want to have a such kind of, you know, um, opportunity when everybody seems to be busy um, making things happen and selling products and services, but there was no real awareness for social good or social impact or right. even CSR or ESG or, you know, like today there is so much more, mm -hmm. but at that time, really there was no demand. So only thing we could do was to actually talk to business people um, personally, you know, like then to tell the story and to tap into people's own sense of purpose or a story behind why they started their business and showing them that it is possible that we can come together to make a positive change for the world. And, you know, that one by one businesses joined us, but it was actually uh, not an easy time, of course. <laughs> yeah. Was there one defining moment or experience in those early days that really solidified your belief in the power of businesses to create positive change? Actually, like since day one, I had no doubt. I love, <laughs> yeah, that. On that, I part, love that so much. You know, like that, there was no doubt that I 100% like believed in the genuine care and intention that the business people had in what they were doing. Because business is very tough. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to just make money, then you might as well just get a job with large companies, right? Like right. so a lot of talented people somehow choose to start their own business and knowing that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do, do it is not just because of the prospect of succeeding and becoming rich or wealthy or, you know, famous or, but the, actually the pursuit of creativity and um, 
the desire to make things better yeah. and solve challenges for others, uplift the people, you know, create opportunities for others. And so there is that genuine intent that every business actually have. And all we needed to do was to find a way to unlock the power of that, because that's really the only way for us to create a better future for all of us. Yeah. We cannot do it through the um, policy, you know, the, the government uh, work or uh, even large organizations, foundations, corporations, they cannot change the world for us. Only way we can really transform our future and ensure that every child um, would have the access to wonderful opportunities in the future is for all of us to take action and beyond kind of differences or any judgment or, you know, like unique qualities that we bring differently, like removing the barrier. If we could just align that we all want to see great future for our ourselves, our loved ones, our children and grandchildren, then we could actually really change this world. And that belief um, in that, <laughs> whether or not we knew how to make it up, <laughs> you know, that, that, that belief was there since the beginning. Yeah. There's no doubt. Because, you know, as a world, we are so divided right now. And remembering the commonalities that we have and the goodness that is in each one mm -hmm. of us to transform our world, we really have to hold on to that hope right now more than anything. How do you mm -hmm. personally practice kindness and giving in your daily life? And how has that influenced your leadership and the culture of B1G1? Mm. Um, I think there, there's a conscious part like in practice and there is like something that it just comes as a part of you know joyful yeah. being <laughs> or living uh, but the conscious part is like actually we need to um, be able to consciously turn into the opportunities to be to, to be doing something to improve things or you know add value or help or um, be just the kind you know spread the positive energy um, uh, express gratitude so sometimes like when we get too busy even though we have a good intention we might forget the opportunities we might miss the opportunities mm -hmm. right like because we are actually like thinking about something else that's not in front of us and so that consciously being present and paying attention to the opportunities to do good with every word, every action, every thought is important. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's also work in progress, right? Like sometimes I get too busy, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> maybe not only sometimes, it's quite a lot, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But the, the, the world is full of opportunities for that moment and how we could bring ourselves to those moments dictate great difference in the future too. Um, and then another thing is like, we, if we really think about um, kindness and if kindness was about doing things for others and you, 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 we feel like, oh, it's like losing something, you know, like giving away means losing something, like whether it's money or time or effort or then it feels like a, a extra chore right like but then if we saw that the kindness and the caring as something that adds to ourselves mm -hmm. so it's a gain 100%. If, if that is a gain at that moment already like so we're not expecting any future gain right. you know like that that to come from outside but we actually already appreciate this internal gain of smiling and then feeling the joy already or saying kind things or you know giving compliments or expressing gratitude and in that moment already feeling great so we don't have a even expectation of being appreciated for what we are saying or doing mm -hmm. then when we can be in that status then everything is a win right <laughs> so yes. yeah so i yeah i think that's like something that I I want to do both consciously and unconsciously. Yeah, I love everything you just said. You could even see this will be on YouTube as well. For those of you that are listening to it on Apple or Spotify, your whole energy just shifted when you started talking about that. Like you could see the joy and just 
providing that statement to our listeners. Like it just oozes out of you, which I love. That's awesome. <laughs> B1G1 is now 16 years later, a global movement with thousands mm. of businesses involved of which we are proudly a member of B1G1. Mm. What strategies or tools do you provide to help businesses integrate giving into their operations? Yeah, how do you provide those mm. tools? Yeah, so um, when you first introduced this um, episode, <laughs> you said B1G1 known as Buy One Give One, but the Buy One Give One was our original um, expression, you know, because we were thinking like every time you buy something, something great happens in the world, uh -huh. right? Like the coffee and then the meal. And so, but today we, actually don't say be, buy one give one anymore and it's be one g one and it stands for a unique methodology and because it's no longer about just the consumer activities mm -hmm. but it's businesses really integrating this tangible impact and many things that happen in their business that are meaningful for them so for example they um, businesses could say every time we have a great meeting we are going to educate a child, help educate a child to celebrate the good meeting. Or, you know, every time you have a wonderful connection and give out your business card, uh, that results in, you know, one day of access to water or plant a tree or... So actually, this can be anything that businesses are doing every day to engage and connect. And because those things happen um, pretty much every day, right? If we are able to give them the way to create the impact in relation to those activities. And of course they can do ad hoc giving too, such as, oh, you know, somebody's birthday, let's celebrate by creating impacts. So, or uh, at the end of the year, what impacts can we create to top up our entire annual impacts? So, uh, so companies can do um, these things with B1G1, but core fundamental value proposition is to inspire and help businesses to think about making giving and impact as a part of their habitual activities. Because if they could do that, and you know, we have a you know cool way to either you know turn it into monthly automated impacts, or uh, it could be linked to the business action through an API, or even like Zapier, you know, like a, the tools that connect. To, um, all the tools that the mm -hmm. businesses are using. So every time Zoom call happens, actually the tree can be planted. Or so we have all this like um, uh, background, you know, back end uh, mechanism to help businesses do so too. But the most important thing is it really about the businesses thinking about what's the most meaningful way for them to um, create the impact on a regular basis and also express their gratitude for their team customers. You know, um, through the through the idea of um, making positive change happen together, because when everybody come together to try to do something that's bigger than themselves, not not just about them, but it's about people that they might never meet, or uh, about the environment and ensuring the you know sustainable future for the for the uh, next generation. Or so when we were doing something that's actually the benefit for all rather than benefit just for ourselves. It unlocks amazing um, experience and a sense of connection. So that's what B1G1 does. And part of it is systematically through the you know, portal that we mm -hmm. develop and the curation of a project that we put into the portal. Um, but then another part of it is that B1G1 initiative is actually a collective of business. So it's, we, we might call it a network or a community, but the, even without, you know, having the kind of like a community activities and they may not know each other, the most magical part is that the, there is that sense of doing together. Yes. You know, like my company is small, but then this is this impact is the impacts I create, but I'm doing this together with many other businesses, which means then collectively we really can create a much greater impact. And we no longer need to be disempowered for being small, that every small can be a positive, um, you know, catalyst for positive change. Yeah, I have to tell you, as a team, you know, we got together and decided mm -hmm. how we were going to approach this. And it was so much fun, like hearing everyone's perspectives, looking through the projects, 
So at Women Igniting Change, we have 15 recurring projects that we do every single month. And then for this podcast, for example, every time we report a podcast, every time we record a podcast, we give 365 days of clean water access. Every time we have a new client, we do another impact. Every time a client achieves a Mm. milestone. And we just did this two weeks ago, I want to say, in Atlanta with one of our corporate clients. And they achieved a milestone Mm. in one of our women's leadership programs. And we printed out these beautiful certificates that were in their folder. And they were so blown Mm. away because we didn't tell them it was part of what we do. Mm. And the joy on their face by knowing that bettering themselves through their organization, they were also making the world a better place. It was just, it was candy. It was just amazing. So much fun. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, these are the stories that really drives the real purpose of B1G1. You know, because we could say our purpose is to transform the world and solve the problems, you know, like the physical problems. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, the important part, delivering uh, life-saving resources to people. That's actually enormously transforming and education opportunities and people to start a business that uplift themselves out of poverty. So these are the kind of end results. But what happens in the middle of it, which is that the business people and their team members and even their customers and clients would actually end up feeling um, this enormous sense of them doing something good and also to have a you know, greater sense of connection and appreciation for each other. This part of what we are doing, I think, can potentially have even greater impact because if every business could actually think like that, you know, how do we do what we do to improve our business, grow our business, grow our revenue and profitability, but whilst making the impacts happen at the same time so that growing the business is almost like part of how do we create a greater impact? And doing that together is going to be better for the business and better for the world. Yeah. So B1G1, okay, listeners, I'm, listen to this number I'm about to give you. B1G1 in 16 years has facilitated over 300 million giving impacts. That's just mind blowing. So beyond the financial contributions, all of those impacts, how does B1G1 engage businesses in creating inspiring giving stories and connecting them to the impact that they're making? Mm. So the the important part of how we do what we do comes from like uh, really breaking down things into micro Mm -hmm. unit of impact, right? Like, so that methodology, because charity organizations that are doing really great things are doing great things, but quite often when people are giving and supporting those causes, um, people don't know what's happening, right? Like so, making the contribution very meaningful and tangible and also measurable, then we need to have some form of measurement indicator. So we will start with the impact breakdown. But also before we get to that, we are actually like selecting and um, uh, shortlisting organizations that meet our criteria of you know sustainability and experience and track record and, mm-hmm. and so on. So with those organizations that are doing really great things, but they may not be really famous charity, you know, they might have a limited marketing budget to right. promote what they are doing, but actually they're doing really great things. Yeah. And so we come in to work with them to really look at the costing of the project and then also ask questions like, OK, you know, if you are building a well or building a school, you know, like what is the cost? And also what is your statistics around the um, uh, length of time that, you know, well would last in the community with minimum maintenance and also how many people uh, are in those communities. Mm -hmm. And then we would do the math and the breakdown. Then it could end up with like, uh, for example, one or two cents, a few cents to give access to water for, for a day, or it could be, you know, a few dollars to plant a, a tree in a particular area, mm-hmm. or it could be a dollar to um, provide a brick toward building a school. Or So we will end up with this unit, micro unit of impact. And then when we create, um, uh, create those impact in the platform, 
then that kind of makes it so so much easier for businesses to go, oh, this is our activity. And how can we create resonant impact that we feel inspired by, um, but link you know, to, to, to the impact that we can actually incorporate into our uh, budget. And you know, when, when they do that re repetitively, even though that each impact could be small, but you know, accumulating those um, impacts and um, amalgamating all of the support and funding coming from many different businesses, right. and then forwarding the um, yeah the funds to the project activities, that that kind of like really does make a big difference. So um, the organizations that we work with, like during the pandemic, um, mm -hmm. actually like. Uh, some of them, you know, wrote in to us to say that during the pandemic, they had to like shut down most of their fundraising activities, right. you know, like in-person events or, you know, street fundraising or, but b one one funding was um, the one type of funding that actually maintained and also even grew like throughout the, that time, you know, like when, when, when we were actually like having difficulty connecting with each other sure. in a normal way, but yeah, the community really came together to give more, actually. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that this model works, which which requires us to think about the next chapter and go like, how can we reach out to more businesses and invite them to, to come and join us yeah. in making the impact together? So I'll give you a little bit of history with, with our journey, because when I created Women Igniting Change back in 2011, we have always, as part of our ethos, given back in service of the organizations that we serve. So every organization that does anything with us, we've always contributed a percentage of that to a charity that serves women and girls. Mm -hmm. But either they would pick the charity or we would come up with one if they didn't have one, but it was clunky and it wasn't always easy and it wasn't smooth. And then when we became members of B1G1, your infrastructure is exceptional. It's so easy to use, and we're going to get into the SDGs in just a moment, but it, it's so easy to use that it feels like we're now making an even greater impact in a multitude of areas that are meaningful to us, meaningful to our customers and our clients. And it just, it took our, our contributions globally to a whole nother level by being a member of B1G1. So we are very proud members. So let's dive into the, the SDGs. So again, we were always connected to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as an organization. And honestly, that's one of the things that drew me to you was I saw that connection to the UN SDGs. I'm like, okay, those are my people. So tell me why that was so crucial to tie the different projects back to the Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. So for us, like, because we were already doing our work well before, um, SDGs or even like millennial, millennial right. goals, right? Like before before that. That, the one before. So we were always coming from like, even when there was no awareness, we were coming from like, how can we drive, uh, businesses to create a positive change and solve global issues, right? Like, so that was always there. Yeah. And we had, we, we've always had our own categorization of health education, environment, you know, income generation, human rights, and so on. But the thing is, when the global goals um, uh, came about, what we saw was this opportunity to create the greater context in, in all of the impacts, like to, to all of the impacts, and then also to invite businesses, including small businesses, to come and join in making the global change happen in a way that is powerful, sustainable, and holistic, and all encompassing yeah. without judging or determining which one is the most important thing because right. every part counts. And this like every part counts is the interesting one because, you know, like with all good intent and everything, we have our own opinion, right? Like yeah. education is the most important because we need to teach the man to fish or something. Yeah. But the thing is like, if somebody is affected by this unfortunate circumstance and don't even have access to water and have to walk like two hours one way to get to a dirt contaminated pond to collect contaminated water. And then every family is getting sick. Babies are um, dying or 
um, children are not going to school because of diarrhea. You know, like so. Then, then we can't even give education because it's survival. Right. <laughs> or it, so that's why, like, actually, there is no right and wrong in what is the most important resources to provide or opportunity to provide. But the people who know the most about what what's needed on the ground are probably local leaders, community people who actually really understand what's going on on the ground. And they will be able to come up with way forward, you know, one step forward, because once you tackle this issue, now people would want to take on that next opportunity. Right. Right? Like, but once without solving other parts of it, the next opportunity might not be taken, even if yeah. you just give. So actually like the global goals was um probably the first time i actually really saw a uh, existing like a prototype or a framework right. that actually fulfilled the gaps in the overall requirement for the world to move forward mm -hmm. together and every element needs to be looked at but because one business or one person or one charity or one organization cannot look at everything right what we need to do is to use this as an invitation for all different parties and the parts and the individuals to look at. Oh, this is the part I want to focus mm -hmm. on. This is the part I can do some good in. And then to bring everything together. So this really like uh, this element, the thinking behind that, that links with B1G1's ideas about the power of small, that we see the value and the enormous power that each business has, each action, each product or service, or you know, each individual has, and then to bring them together. So um, integrating um, global goals into our product category, in addition to our conventional standard category, um, was an exciting way to actually deepen the meaning of, you know, the businesses making impacts and um, rewarding them with the idea that the, however small what they are doing, that they are actually making an enormous contribution to the, um, you know, the fulfilling the future um, that we are creating together. Yeah, one of the ways, that's one of the ways that we chose the projects um, to contribute mm -hmm. to. So every member of the team on our website, in the corner of our photo, we have the SDG that's most meaningful to us. So I'm number five, gender equality. Mm. Um, but we have other members that are number two, <laughs> zero poverty. Uh, Christine is mm. number 10. Um, so all of us chose impacts that were meaningful to us. And we were able mm. to fulfill that for the entire team through B1G1, mm. which was really amazing. And then for our customers and our clients, you know, we pick any of the multitude, but it's always around women and girls for us because that's who we are. So that's one of the ways that companies can do that is have each member of your team, which SDG means the most to them and have them pick an impact that circles around that. I, I would love like many other um, B1G1 businesses and members to actually, you know, listen to this. So um, if you are happy to share the recording later, Absolutely. I would love to kind of like, you know, like because talking about what happened in each of the business and what happened to their team, Right, like as a part of um, implementing B1G1, these are the stories that can inspire more good because we want to business, other businesses to get ideas from, you know, uh, other businesses doing good things and what's kind of like really working for them and making a positive change. Not the, only the facts of creating impacts, but how that's kind of improving the culture of the business or how the team members are feeling or how the customers feel about doing right. business with them. I'd love that, you know, to be uh, shared and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I'm more than happy to do that. And one of the other things that <laughs> B1G1 offers that is just an amazing are the tools in order to share what the companies are doing. So we have this beautiful mm -hmm. impact page on our new website because oh, you great. provide all of the widgets and the tools and we just plug stuff in and it looks amazing. So the, the tools that you provide to businesses to help us create, you give us the photos, you help us with the language, you help us do the widgets that shows the number of impacts that we've contributed. It's just a really amazing way to elevate our company out in the world and show what we're doing that before was really behind the scenes. And now we get to showcase that front and center, which we absolutely love. 
That is great. That is great. Great to hear. So how does your team select and vet the projects that are part of B1G1 and how can individuals or businesses find the products that align with their own values and interests on the site? Mm. So first of all, um, B1G1 uh, is uh, an initiative. So, uh, you know, not everybody knows this, but we have uh, two separate organizations. One is the social enterprise, which is based in Singapore, which does all of the development of the B1G1 platform to, you know, like the content, the uh, value proposition, uh, membership program to businesses. Um, and we exist uh, as a social enterprise and a B Corp um, that kind of exist with our own um, business model and sustainability mm -hmm. model, which is that the businesses will contribute a small subscription charge and become a member, have an account, and then we provide them services, right? Like, and then, but the thing is when businesses are finding the project to give, then that actually goes through our sister organization called B1G1 Giving, which is a, um, a registered charity in, in, in the states. Uh -huh. So this organization has a separate independent board, which set the criteria for the program. So we cannot really work with any charity, right? Like even though we get lots of recommendations sure or charity organizations us. approach us, yeah, but like our um, criteria makes it actually quite challenging for organizations to apply and join us. Um, you can find out more about these um, criteria in our separate website, b1g1.org. But the whole initiative information can be found on b1g1.com. Right, like so. Um, then the the you know going through the process of assessment, um, the organizations are also um, being uh, reviewed on annual basis. So we have an annual review criteria as well, and we look into the kind of financial reporting, audited accounts, and so on. So um, I wouldn't get into it too much, but uh, yeah, anybody who want to find out about the process of it, the information is um, out there. It's all transparently available. And um, as a business, right, um, actually, like when you come into the B1J1 portal and then you've exp experienced this, Robin, as well, that it's so easy to actually search for the project. It's almost like um, shopping, uh, yes, you know, shopping. Type for, uh, like, you know, almost like Amazon for kindness, <laughs> right? Like, so you go to Amazon to find the things that you want for yourself, mm -hmm. but you go to B1J1 to find the impact that you want to create. So you could do keyword search, category search, you know, like a price range and so on, and find the yeah, project and uh, uh, very easily create the impact. So um, actually like searching and finding the project is not too uh, difficult to do, mm -hmm. but if some businesses are going for like, oh my gosh, there are so many, <laughs> uh, it's harder to choose because there are so many options. Mm -hmm. Then we are also, um, creating this special project type of project called global project. So what happened is if there are 20 different water projects in B1G1 and you don't know which one you want to support, but you want to bring water to people who actually don't mm -hmm. have access to water, then you could give to B1G1's um, curated global project. And then what happened is we would then distribute the contributions um, for global projects to all of the water projects Amazing. or all of the tree projects to plant the trees around the world. Or, so we come up with these solutions for people who don't want to necessarily give to a very specific project in a you know, specific location, but they are happy to be supporting all the um, projects around the world. Then we actually use that to distribute um, the funding so that more um, impacts can happen around the world. Beautiful. What advice do you have for individuals who they want to make a difference in their communities, but they may not be mm. part of a business? Mm. How can they take meaningful action and create their own giving impact? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to say like, oh, why don't we want to have a personal giving initiative? And we, along the way, explored this, but we um, decided that we will focus on business. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we will focus on business is businesses are the initiator of actual day-to-day -day actions, you know, because without thinking about donating money or like giving to a campaign, right. 
individuals are always um, doing what they do through business activities. Like you have a meal, you have grocery, you have you know phone services. Everything we do is enabled by businesses. Right. So we want to focus on unlocking this, right? So then how individuals can participate in this is, first of all, um, uh, recommending B1J1 one one to businesses. Right. <laughs> That's a fantastic thing you could do. If you know the businesses that are part of B1J1, one one, we would love them to love them to support these businesses as much as they can and also spread the word about those businesses. Uh -huh. um, and then if you are working for a company, and many of us do, right, work for, mm -hmm. for companies um, as team members, then we would love you to actually encourage your business to take a look at the B1G1 as well, because that like is the way that impact can be created ongoingly. And rather than we just think of, oh, we should donate now and then forget about it for the rest of the yeah. year, like do, do as ad hoc. Actually, we could mobilize businesses together to make things happen. So look ahead five or 10 years. What are your aspirations and your goals for B1G when in terms of expanding your reach and influence and creating a world full of giving? Mm. Well, we started B1G1 um, to start to, uh, you know, to, to create the world full of giving, as you said. So th this is our mission and uh, it's actually our vision as well. And in order for us to enable that vision, we work with businesses and enable them to integrate the impact in what they do. So if we think about what's the end outcome, you know, that we want to create is really to see like almost every business being part of this um, uh, mission mm -hmm. and actually doing, playing a part that they play. And there is a long way to go because we still see a lot of challenges in the world that we need to actually tackle. Right. And so there are so many businesses that still don't know what they could do. Right. And so how do we actually reach out to more businesses to make sure that they know this, mm -hmm. they could actually do this? Because if they realize how little it takes and how simple it is for them to start doing this, there is no reason to not do the good that they could do. Absolutely. And so, yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure exactly what I can say, like, because now we are doing, um, we have done 335 million giving impacts. So we could say 1 billion impacts would be great or 10 billion impacts would be great, right? Like, but even though numbers are important and we do set the KPIs and goals for ourselves, but the real important part is not necessarily just the big numbers. It's, the it's about the feeling and then that, yeah, you know, the, the fact that we are doing this together, we are creating that future together and we feel empowered to take those small actions and follow through with actual actions. No, not just the talking, but actually doing. Right. Where can our listeners find out more about B1G1 and how to get involved? Mm. So um, I mentioned that the, our website, b1g1.com, is a great place to start. And if you are particularly interested in the uh, cause, you know, our uh, what we call the program side, then you can go and take a look at b1g1.org. But um, if you want to connect with me and uh, follow my sharing and mm -hmm. content and uh, uh, interact, and then um, please find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always very happy to connect with people who have great ideas, doing great things, you know, businesses that want to make a difference. So please do connect. Mm. Masami, I cannot thank you enough. This has been amazing. For our listeners, we will have links to Masami's lengthy full bio, links to B1G1, and we will see you back here next time. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Women Igniting Change. I know creating change matters to you. If you enjoy what we talk about on the show, please take one action today and share it with someone who could benefit from listening. Until next time, keep standing up and speaking out for what matters.